So guys, Alexeis um, is gonna share his screen for probably the better part of the talk um, so that you can see his work. And sort of as always, let's just keep ourselves muted so that other noises don't interfere. Um, if you have, oh my God, that's loud. If you have questions um, as Alexeis kind of gets started and is presenting his work, just unmute yourself and go ahead and ask that. Um, if your um, audio is not working, or you're not comfortable asking a question, just go ahead and put it in the chat and um, myself or one of the other faculty can go ahead and ask it for you. Um, but other than that, I'm recording this now so that um, other people can watch it later. And um, so maybe be mindful of what you're doing in your little video boxes. Uh, and we can go ahead and get started. Alexis, if you wanna take it away. Sure. Um, <clears throat> my name is Alexei Reyes. Um, I'm from Cuba. Um, I did my undergrad degree at Columbia University, um, and I I'm now here at Cal Arts doing my MFA in Art and Integrated Media. Um, I think my work tries to address uh, issues of power structures and relationship to diasporic displacement and gender politics and, um, and its relationship to identity as well. Um, I wanted to start, I guess, presenting my, the project that I studied here at CalArts, which is my thesis, and perhaps um, then I can present other work. Um, and I wanted to sort of, because the project has been sort of, you know, stopped in the middle of production, um, I wanted to perhaps talk about my process and how I arrived at this work. Um, so I was awarded the Felix Gonzalez Torres travel grant, and I used that grant to travel back to my country after 30 years of being displaced and, uh, and being a political dissident um, to examine and, and, and study how uh, now the government in Cuba has uh, legalized censorship and what are the consequences of this and how it affects uh, the body of the artist in terms of uh, the production of work and, and if you do produce work under such condition, what kind of work you produce. So. Um, that became a big sort of life, lo, lifelong project for me, uh, of which this project that, that I have, that I'm going to talk about for my thesis, uh, it's a little, it's a sliver of that research and, 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 that, and, and that study, which continues, uh, 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 has continued since I went back to my country. Um, so um, I'm going to share my screen and Perhaps I can show a document of, of that I have used for research and um, imagery and um, and referencing. Um, so and sort of a little bit of writing as well. And then later I'll present uh, a poem that I wrote uh, that is also a kind of catalyst for this project. Um, so okay, so I'm going to share now screen so here uh, I start this this document with uh, my what my mentor is Michael Ned Halty here at CalArts and he uh, I, I just recently read an, an article where there was a line that I found very interesting and it's it says uh, the presence of a threshold that is not only geographical but also ideological, and um, I, uh, that 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 helps me to think about phenomenology as well as you know as as uh, as a kind of event setting in society how phenomenon affects us right uh, not only geographically but also ideological and we're right now in history we're going through a you know one of those traumatic events, which is a sort of collective thing. Um, uh, should I just read 
Should I just read what I wrote rather than just present it? Uh, sure. How about some highlights, maybe? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so, so the work consists of um, a site, this idea of, of Robert Smithson's idea of site, non site. And so there's land work, which consists of a big island of a radius of 31 feet by 31 feet. And then in the middle, there's, an, there's a kind of island, except it doesn't have water. Um, and there's a tree in the middle. Um, and for me, the representation of the island, aside from the obvious that I am from an island, it's also this idea where to create a place where uh, power loses control and where there is no power structure there, where there's just this sort of um, uh, place where, you know, this idea of power in particular in government uh, and uh, it has lost meaning. Um, and so the other part of the exhibition was going to be uh, a surveillance camera uh, surveilling the island, and uh, it was going to be live stream into the gallery. Um, and in the gallery, there was there is there's going to be a relief sculpture in the middle uh, of um, of an oar, and uh, along with another video of um, bodies of water from Cuba, New York, and now California. And it's just basically a, a steady shot of the beach and sometimes a close-up of the water. Um, and the symbolism of water as a kind of, for me, living in an island to a sort of, in particular for people who escape Cuba, uh, to be uh, both a, a place of freedom, but it's also a place to die. Um, and so the relationship between freedom and death comes into play and as well as this idea of the nation state right so uh, ideas about nationalism and how ideas of nationalism are uh, subsumed under socio-political culture and economic historical discourses and um and but also how nationalism is used as a tool to control the social body and the implication of that control in society uh, using nationalism as a kind of, you know, uh, ideological position to, to uh, control, control people. Um, so this, this project also, that's one of the other layers of that project. Um, another layer of the work, it's rooted in this idea of an absence that can also be a presence um, and, and how, uh, and how that is used for me in this work to dislocate this idea of place, right? And, and, and explore the concept of non-locality as well, which also destabilizes the idea of a nation state, right? So there's non-locality that create a kind of intersectional contrast that is, um, that is both reality, you know, denying and uh, reality confirming, right? So, uh, and, and the meaning of that. Uh, and so that's, that's sort of like the gist of it. And, and the, so this document actually presents, um, you know, my, my working through titles. Um, and for example, I thought of uh, the, surveillance, uh, the surveillance of the island. The title would be my, in Spanish is uh, my my discourse of uh, simulacra. I don't know if people know what simulacra means, um, but I can explain it. Uh, simulacrum is this, this idea of an absence, presence, and it's also uh, this idea of an original without a copy, right? Which, is, which are theories or, or discussed by uh, John Baudrillard, uh, philosopher Gilles Deleuze, and, and uh, uh, Jack is Derrida in terms of deconstruction um, and in language. Uh, so that's one of the titles of one of the pieces. Another title is Entanglement of Matter and Meaning, which has to do with some of the sound that I was going to use in the piece. Uh, and um, uh, the sculpture's title is Material Traces of Erasure. Um, uh, this title and a lot of this wording comes from um, uh, an in, uh, 
a, a physicist. Her name is uh, Karen Barad, but she also talks about queer temporality, uh, me being queer uh, and being displaced from my country. I sort of uh, have read a lot of her works uh, and how she approaches queer temporality, temporality through um, physics. And um, so uh, these are just sort of like some of the logistics of the project for the university or the school and uh, budget, budget that I come up with to, for materials and, and work and labor. Uh, these are some of the research that I have sort of been a lot of the re books and readings that I have been uh, examining uh, for, for the work. And these are some of the images that I have been sort of uh, dealing with um, and looking at um, in relationship to the work uh, and different artists and how other artists have sort of thought about the idea of an island and the meaning of, uh, of, and the meaning of it. Um, and finally, this image here, uh, this is material uh, and this image here, which um, a friend of mine sent me because she was she knew that I was making an island. Um, so um, Megan, I sent you images of of the island of the work as I was making it. Um, mm -hmm. Would you like to share that or should I share that as well? Uh, yeah, I sent them some images of your planning sketches but didn't include the in progress shot. Oh, okay. If you wanna do that. Sure, okay. Um, I think I'm gonna have to stop first and then go into the, I'm gonna look for the images in my, um, my email because I sent them to you um, and then I can just sort of uh, present from there. Um, uh, okay, so I'll share a screen again. So here is, uh, can you guys see that or? Yeah, that's good. If you could make it a little bit bigger, that might be good. Yeah, sure. Uh, can you see the, or, the, the relief of the ore? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. And then here is sort of a, a kind of weird shot of the, of the site, um, which I, the other, I mean, that's all I sent. Um, and all I have is video for now, um, but yeah, in the sketches. So, I mean, this project, uh, oh, sorry. And then let me present the poem. I'll also present the poem where uh, the island about, uh, where this project also started as well, which is a poem that I did when I came to Cuba after 30 years um, of being away. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit scattered. <laughs> um, but here, I found it. Um, So here's the poem that I wrote. Uh, perhaps I can just read it. Um, it's called Island. Um, I'm from a colonial, uh, I'm from colonial arches. Uh, from Malta are tway and black beans. I'm from an island with crying airwaves, sugar eyes and busy beaties. From fields of pierced bones and boneless cemeteries. I'm from an island with occult gem, gem, uh, gems a virgin island with clear hills and sensual offerings to colonial witnesses, a lustrous ember of green breath. I'm from good food on narrative tables and optical hope in empty bellies, from Caridad Santos, Abuela Juana, and Yolanda. 
I'm from household idols with bloody adornments mounted on trivial frames of cats, sages, to hold hostage nomads of ideal age and tricky spirits in disarray, cluster within undiscovered beauty among opulent colors. I'm from materialized sentiments um, and wingless birds and inward pace. I'm from leap years of revolution and revolutionaries of special lenses ready to die in battle without despair. I am from Cuba, fried eggs, white rice, and maduros, from dirt on living room in spite of clean, days, clean day manners. My sister slapped my smile away. The crisscrossing lineage in missionary occasions deny the right to say goodbye. I'm from unforeseen superstitions, persisting in the symbolisms of, of a consequential future, as though waiting to be taken from where I belong, from death in the name of return. I am from a persuasive island with sweet ridges misused current in unison, with coffee peaks and tactical inlets where ghost trees weep louder than thunder and fall back against an abyss reshaped by, by pure expressions of my embrace. Uh, so that, that, that helped me think a lot about the project of the island in conjunction with the, um, the video of the water, of the waves, um, and, um, and the sculpture. Uh, so there's all these layers that I worked through for this uh, thesis. And um, yeah, uh, I think that's, that's as much as I, I can say for now. I feel like <laughs> I... <laughs> Thank you. Can you see the chat box, Alexia? Yes, I can. can see the conference. Okay, cool. Um, I had a question for you. I was wondering if you could talk briefly about the interdisciplinary aspects of your work and sure. maybe how that aids you in research and development um, or how you can see that informing a younger person's practice. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, at this point in, in the history of art, uh, Although I understand someone who's a painter and purely a painter or someone who's purely a poet, I see a relationship between media or between disciplines as a kind of um, space or it, or it creates a kind of bridge in order to use different disciplines as, uh, as tools because, um, because each, each, each um, discipline has limitations as well as uh, as well as um, advances, you know, as, as, uh, uh, um, and so um, I think marrying certain disciplines creates a, a, a better deployment of ideas or a better working through ideas. Um, and, 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 and it doesn't confine you to, to just one thing. Although, you know, someone who writes a beautiful poem is a beautiful poem, a beautiful poem is a beautiful poem, you, you know? And, and or a photograph, you know, has its sort of visual language that could, you know, the viewer can be, can, can, can be subjective to as much as they want. And, 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 and so, but for me, because I've studied, because of my, in my undergrad, I studied different media, uh, I sort of try to use them in, uh, depending on the ideas that I have and depending on the projects. And, um, and sort of, but it's also, there's a kind of intuitive dimension to my practice where um, uh, I try to sort of interrogate materials and see what they, they give me in order to, to, to have my ideas convey meaning and urgency. Um, and, in that, and in doing so, I feel like the disciplines allow me to explore and experiment with different materiality and, and what that materiality yields. Can you share images and speak about early work, earlier works and how you get insp inspiration for your work? Does it come from other works, materials, uh, discontent, beauty? Uh, great question. Thank you, uh, Chris. Um, sure. I mean, uh, I think for me, 
uh, I love materials and so I get inspired by materials and I think materials have micro histories and, and, um, and allow for uh, creating new mythologies about certain histories. Um, and so uh, discontent, yeah, for me, discontent is a political position that I am in. Um, and the uh, inter, inter, intersectionality of my, of my identity um, and, and meaning from where I come from, what cultures I have lived in, which for me, I've lived in three different cultures and assimilating those cultures and, um, uh, and what that means for who I am. And, and in terms of beauty, I mean, I think beauty, it's, uh, that's subjective. And so uh, it depends on what I find beautiful and, you know, which differs. Uh, and so I can show images of earlier work. Uh, let me go to my website and then I can perhaps uh, show some of that work. Um, So uh, I can show, um, let's, can I show perhaps, I can show the, the drawings. I show this process. Um, Uh, Megan, did you mean the ink drawings that that have spanned a decade? Yeah, I think they were the from the Secret series. Is that right? And yeah, then, yeah. Uh, Billy just asked what the medium is for the for these drawings. So, uh, so okay, so this project, uh, which uh, of which this one is the first. Um, was initially a, a me doing an experiment with materials and uh, I was doing a, a stone lithography. Uh, I don't know if people have tried that in the school, but I was doing a stone lithography and um, I was working with wash, which is really hard to edge onto the stone. And, um, and so I wanted to, to play with opacity and, and play with the idea of opacity and understanding, right? So, uh, that is exhibited here and like how much information is on, on the surface. And, and from a pure technical perspective, I was interested in finding out how uh, in the process of lithography, uh, information uh, becomes etched onto the stone and then is erased and then is brought back. And the representation of that in terms of, uh, in terms of like uh, our own histories, right? And so, um, and using abstraction as a way to sort of play with ideas of, 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 of meaning. Um, and so I, uh, I failed <laughs> with the experiment on stone and I kept failing for, for days and days. And uh, the etching was being, I was using too much acid. So there was no uh, tonality coming through as I was making proofs um, of, the, of the wash. And and uh, so finally, I, I found a way to make the, uh, once I etched the image onto the stone and then printed it uh, and transferred onto paper, I, find, I found a way to use, to uh, make the ink more workable with transparency based material so that then the tonality starting to come out. So once I made that and I sort of was happy with that print, I started experimenting with the same thing, but on, this is drafting film and Indian ink. 
And so I started using Indian ink and drafting film and using uh, a blow dryer to manipulate the ink and, uh, and, and, and using the blow dryer as a tool to allow uh, the tonalities to come in and out of, of the surface and, and play with opacity and play with understanding. So then thinking about this work and in, in, in terms of the visual, you know, what happens to, in terms of visual information, I started thinking about how when you go to the airport, how, you know, uh, these machines you put in your luggage and, and it completely reveals all your secrets. And so I started thinking about privacy and thinking about our, how this culture of surveillance, right? It, 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 it plays into our personal lives and the role that surveillance has in terms of, you know, what, it, what information is being used and, and, and hidden, right? And so that's what this series comes about. And I usually do them in diptych, although here are not presented in such as diptych. Um, and so I started playing around with that idea of secrecy and what it means for us in, in surveillance culture. Uh, what did you major in and what is, wait, sorry, Billy, uh, what was the medium? Oh, I think I said that already. Um, but uh, Amadi Williams, uh, what did you major in and what inspired you to go into multimedia uh, pieces? Um, I major in history, criticism, and theory at Columbia University. And the program there in, in art is a, is a BA, not a BFA. So the program is rooted in the history, criticism, and, and theory of art, whereby you do your degree until you're like uh, the year before you graduate, you're a, you, then you're given a studio and that last year you produce a body of work um, and present it. And so, I, I, so you actually don't have a lot of studio time only on your last year of the program. Um, so you basically at Columbia, you get more into uh, a lot of theory heavy, you know, and uh, of art and criticism. And I think Columbia as an undergrad there, they try to shape you into a more a philanthropist rather than sort of an individualized concentration. So you are more, your education is more broad. And, 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 and I think from that, my, I, uh, I became more multidisciplinary. Although I don't paint much. I love painting, but that's the only kind of discipline that I don't really sort of practice much. Oh, that's a good question, Ray. How have you stayed motivated during quarantine? I think uh, what quarantine has done for me it has enhanced my research <laughs> capabilities and, and how I sort of think about work using language and, uh, and, um, and, uh, and, and planning and researching ideas and developing them through language and research and, and, and even poetry. Uh, and so quarantine is frustrating, but at the same time, for now, it has, it has become a kind of, I have to turn it around and sort of not let it affect me, although it is affecting all of us, but at the same time, as individually, what I'm trying to do is not let it affect my practice um, and trying to reconfigure this quarantine into a, a productive time for me. When coming up with a project idea, do you already have an idea of what materials you use or does the research guide the significance of the materials you use? Wow, that's a great question. Um, I, I think I could answer that in multiple ways. Uh, I think uh, there's a balance between my ideas about materials and uh, and how I approach ideas to make projects. And I think um, it's a coexistence of both things, of, of, of doing research, of thinking about materials and how materials can activate a space and how they uh, uh, convey meaning 
and convey the meaning of the project and, and whether it's a sort of uh, criticism or it's a kind of representation of something. And, um, and, then, uh, and then the research does guide the significance of the materials because uh, I think for me, it's, it, it was important in my practice too, is the experimentation of materials and how experimentation can lead to certain avenues of, of dialogue and how uh, uh, that experimentation is also a way for me to uh, create a discourse um, around the work. Uh, perhaps may I please uh, show, um, yeah, I guess I'll show other works. Um, so this is an older work. Uh, this is um, Dropped and Give Me 20. Um, this is a bent plexiglass mirror that I made from scratch. Um, um, so it's, I didn't buy the mirror, I sort of made it myself. Um, and uh, to push your hearts. Um, oh wait, so Megan, you says, it sounds like your thesis island require a lot of work with human resources. Can you talk about how this work and how you, how you help, how you collaborate with first, the services you needed to obtain earth moving machines, working with the city for water delivery. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, if you want to, if you want to show the other work first, then maybe just come okay, back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So perhaps I just, I'll just scroll around. Mm -hmm. What's going on in this one? Uh, this is called, uh, bad education. Um, and, and so this has to do a lot with the idea of, well, I mean, it started from, because I'm influenced from a lot of different culture avenues. Uh, it came from, I don't know if you've seen Pedro Amadovar's Bad Education. It's a mm -hmm. Spanish film um, that talks about identity politics and um, it deals with, you know, transgender, uh, transsexuals, uh, and, uh, and the meaning of family in relationship to uh, sexual orientation and gender politics. Um, uh, so this is from a body of work. Uh, I was influenced for this body of work from, um, it's a documentary called Paris is Burning, uh, which is a, it's a, it's a window into the voguing culture in New York City back in the 80s and from 1984. I would say 1984 or 1983, all the way into later. Um, and so this work has uh, a lot of the work that I made uh, for, for example, this one, uh, this one, and this one, they have a line from, the, from that documentary. Uh, so this one is called Butch Queen, and it's a line from the documentary about one of the categories in the in the bull scene, which is like a butch queen, which is a guy who dresses up dresses up as a woman, but he's butch, but he, he passes as a woman dressed as a woman. Uh, so that so that's the line from that. Um, and this is called uh, "We Are Not Going to Be Shady, uh, Just Fears." And so that's another line from the documentary, where the MC of the ball is warning the audience. Uh, we're not gonna be, you know, throw attitude. We're just gonna be, uh, the word fears here is used as a kind of way of saying a position of like uh, empowerment. Um, uh, this is another line from the documentary. So it's called, it is a known fact that a lady do carry an, an evening bag. No lady is safe at night. Um, so that's another sort of descriptive performative uh, uh, work that talks about life in New York being gay in the 80s and, and, um, and, and passing, uh, the idea of passing. Um, this work I'm gonna pass. <laughs> um, this, uh, this is called Golden Girls. I mean, I don't know if you guys know of the, pro the program Golden Girls. So I play a lot with puns. 
So I play a lot with language to gesture to something else while presenting something else uh, at the same time. Um, so uh, I guess you guys can go to my website and look at the work, but um, uh, let me try to answer your question, Megan. Um, so that's a great question because uh, that was also a process unto itself that could also, I would, you know, the, I would make work out of the process of contacting and having conversation with the university and following their policy about making work outside of the, of the galleries and what that means in terms of altering the space or altering the terrain around the university, even though it's a terrain that's not being used. And so the conversations that I had to go through and the forms I had to fill out to do that. And then also the, the conversations around labor and the meaning of labor in terms of making this project, uh, renting the equipment, using the equipment, following the, the company from which I rented the equipment but that they had their own policies and their own rules to use that equipment. Um, and then also bringing other artists like some of my cohort to help me uh, work on it, you know, specifically working uh, with the with the excavator with the main excavator which is also another learning curve for me which is I had to learn how to use an excavator that I had never done before and my friend as well so us making the work as we learn how to use the equipment that was another interesting layer to the work and then um, uh, I didn't have to deal with the city because I didn't get to rent the water truck to go get the water and then bring it from Ventura Beach. And so that was gonna be another sort of com layer of complication and, and, and communication uh, that was gonna be intense, you know, because I would have had to rent the equipment, go to Ventura Beach at night, take the ocean water, which who owns ocean water, but I had to do it, <laughs> you know, in secrecy. And so that was the other kind of part, which is another added layer to the work that I didn't even get to do, and perhaps in the future I, I will. And so who gets to own the water if I'm taking the water? Who does the water belong to? Do people, do, do, do states own ocean waters? I guess you do, but like where at and how, you know? So those were sort of other problems and concerns that raise the work races, right? So concerns of labor in this country and ideas of uh, ownership, right? And uh, and policy about again nationalism, right? So the nation, uh, the nation. So uh, also ideas of colonialism and post-colonialism, and how how that plays into this work, and and relationship to uh, ideas of you know owning things, right? And um, so yeah, that was that was another layer of intensity that I had to work through. Uh, so the, so that also the work is a kind of learning thing for me you know as i as i figure out things because at first i didn't know how i was going to do this work i just knew that i wanted to make an island and so figuring out those 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 factors was was uh hard how did you achieve a chrome uh finish on the plexiglass uh the plexiglass you can um you can buy that and so the finish of the chrome is also, uh, you can buy it. So before I made it so smooth, um, I, I messed up a lot. I, I destroyed a lot. So finally, by making a lot of mistakes, I finally learned a system of how to make uh, a flawless finish and how to, uh, how to manipulate the material in terms of bending it and what kind of heat I needed and how much pressure I had to apply and uh, how much glue I had to use. And so, uh, and for, for those pieces, it was, it was hard to, to do that. Um, I, had to, I had to make a lot of mistakes. I'm sad that you didn't get to ocean water. I'm sad too, because I was gonna bring the ocean to CalArts, right? I was gonna sort of have an opportunity to just bring a piece of the ocean which is, you know, that was another thing about the work, right? The ocean for me is important being from an island. And I think an ocean is a unifying sort of symbol that unifies all, all the continents. And, 
uh, my, it, it might not be the same temperature, but it's an ocean and the ocean uh, becomes like uh, Gertrude Stein poem of a rose is a rose is a rose, right? So here the ocean is an ocean is an ocean. And so um, thinking about those historical paradigms as well. Um, so I'm sad that I didn't get to bring the ocean to CalArts. I like these awkward silences because <laughs> it means that people are thinking or not. <laughs> yeah, we've started playing I Spy while waiting for people to show up. Um, <laughs> if you guys have any other questions, go ahead and, and put them in the chat. Um, but in the meantime, I was curious, your planning document was so thorough. It was almost like a grant proposal or project proposal, really. Um, do you create documents like that for every project you do, or is that more outward facing if you are looking for support, et cetera? I started actually uh, this uh, last year as an MFA one when I structured the grant for the Felix Gonzalez grant. And um, because English is not my first language, uh, my writing process is a, is a, it takes takes a little bit so I usually tend to start to start early and so I started planning my thesis in in uh, during the Thanksgiving break and um, started writing and doing research early and so uh, that's why I got along I, I have a lot I achieved a lot before my thesis my thesis was supposed to be the week of uh, April 18 through the 26th um, if the crisis wouldn't have happened, I would have finished with a lot of time to sort of be ready, you know? Um, and so I think that for me, uh, the Felix Gonzalez process began, uh, was the beginning for me, the catalyst for me to whenever I make work now, I do, I do that now. I, I write it as a proposal because I think of my work now as projects that are interlaced. Oh, uh, can you talk more about the Felix Gonzalez Torres grant or the grant process in general? Yes, absolutely. Uh, thank you, Jason. Um, yeah, the Felix Gonzalez travel grant uh, was a grant, it's a $5,000 grant that, uh, because Felix used to teach here at CalArts, he established a grant, uh, I, think, I think after he died. So the state gave the university uh, a chunk of money and so they, uh, you have to propose uh, that you want to do a project, and 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 whether it's your country or somewhere, you have you got you got to travel, right? So um, you can get a. Uh, they try to divide it between MFA ones and BFA fours, uh, and so BFA yeah BFA fours, and so you're allowed, you're invited to uh, apply and propose. Um, anything, I mean, anything you want to investigate and study. So for me, it just so happens that at the time when I, uh, that December, when I was uh, in my middle of my first year at CalArts, I wanted to, uh, the law, there was a law in Cuba that was passed that actually legalized censorship. And it's called 349. Uh, and although in Cuba, there's always been, there's always been a sort of censorship culture, uh, even though that's not the only tool the government uses to, uh, to control, to have hemogenic control over the, 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 the culture, uh, uh, censorship is one of them. And, 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 and it's applied in different levels, right? Uh, psychologically, physically, uh, and so, but now it's legal. Now they made it legal and, and implemented it or in, embedded into the, in the new constitution. So I went there, I started a relationship with um, artists there and uh, uh, one of my old professors from undergrad who, her name is Coco Fusco, who has been sort of studying the history of this in Cuba for almost 30 years. And she's a scholar, uh, she's an intellectual and she's one of my, one of my mentors in undergrad. And so she helped, and she wrote a book about performance politics in Cuba in 2018. And so using that book as a catalyst for my research and using uh, my conversations with her as a kind of 
uh, to inform and shape my proposal. And so I went there, and so I applied for the grant, not really expecting anything, and uh, they gave me actually $3,000 out of the $5,000. And so it was me and an, a, BFA, a BFA four. So basically I went there to study how conduct or behavior dictates aesthetic culture and the industry politics there and the cultural industry politics and how intercommunicate intercultural communication uh it's a contradiction it's a phenomenon there because it both it it it, it renders itself mute as well as produces culture so it's a kind of phenomenon because the government centers culture at the, at the same time it promotes culture but through the layer of the revolution, it uses nationalism as a way of controlling that culture through behavior. And so how does that affect corporeal expression in terms of artistic practices? And I sort of did, I did, uh, I did interviews, I did writing, I did poetry, and so I, I documented a lot of stuff. Um, and I have a lot of material. And so the island is a little sliver of that material, of that sort of research. Um, uh, what was the Spanish word from earlier that represented a connection? I think uh, I was about, uh, it was about the island. Um, oh gosh. Uh, Billy, do you, re do you remember which part of the, of the conversation? I, 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 what word or what kind of, what was I referring to um, when you were reading your poem? Oh, yes. I think uh, the poem, okay, um, uh, the poem, at the beginning of the poem, where I use uh, Marta Artue, oh yeah, Marta Artue, uh, it's a malt, it's, a, it's kind of, it's a, when I was a kid, I used to drink malt with, condensed milk, and the brand in Cuba is, is called Marta Atue. Uh, how do you spell it? Uh, yeah, of course, thank you. Anybody else has any sort of questions or, or concerns? <laughs> We've got about five minutes left. Um, there you go, there's some more questions. Thanks so much. Uh, Amaya, yes, I, I wrote a lot of, I write a lot of poetry in session English and uh, poetry for me is a kind of, it's a way to use uh, certain ideas to think about other ideas. Uh, and there's a book that um, that I would recommend if you have if you have time to read uh, by Aunt, uh, Donna Haraway, and it talks about how there's this uh, anthropology anthropologist in London who you, who talks about this idea of using uh, certain language to talk about other language uh, ideas to talk about other ideas, and so and and it's interesting how she de deconstructs culture through this process. And um, so, um, uh, I mean, you can read all of Donna Haraway's books. They're, she's amazing. And uh, so I recommend reading her. Uh, and so that, that, that comes from uh, poetry. It's, it's a system of, of, uh, that creates a, a way for me to, you know, think about certain ideas as I, to, to think about other ideas. I don't know if that makes sense. Do you believe that your childhood fueled the topics you research? Uh, I don't know that they, I don't know fuel, but, but I think I would use the word uh, shape and inform. In my childhood, uh, being displaced from my country, then moving to another country and living there for four years and then coming here and then living in other different cultures, it certainly informs and shapes my, my practice today. Uh, is it on your site, your poem, your other? No, my poems are not on my website because I've been working on a book. So right now I'm editing a lot of past poems and, and, and I'm working on two photography books, which uh, have photography and poetry together. So 
my poetry uh, right now it's, it's in that but I write almost every day all the time and they help me they help me think about abstract uh, abstract concepts and feelings and emotions and anger and love and uh, etc Uh, Alexis, maybe could we wrap up with, um, if you have them, any words of quarantine encouragement for younger people or like uh, ideas for working around, maybe not having the materials that you might want to have, especially as a printmaker, maybe you have some hacks for them. Yeah, me and Dan Robert Dansby, uh, we're thinking about this a lot here and um, I mean, one thing, you, one way of perhaps to work out some ideas is to use uh, sun prints, uh, getting, you know, ordering sun prints and uh, util utilizing that media to, to, to work out ideas because it lends itself to a lot of different ways of, of printing. Um, and uh, I think Blick delivers a, uh, you know, if there's a way that you guys can get access to certain materials from Blake. Uh, there's a lot of safe printing methods to do at home. Um, for me, quarantine uh, has meant to, uh, has moved me a lot to the writing realm, um, but also photography, um, which I, I often has to sort of do it all the time. And so uh, I try to, if I go out, I try to always photograph um, to get food or, or something, or just to have a walk around here on campus because I'm on campus. So when I take walks, I try to sort of photograph nature. I think that helps for me too. And um, I mean, and reading, I read a lot, but a lot of research and um, because we have so many tools now and digital tools to 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 acquire. I, I try I try to use them as much as possible in terms of reading, watching documentaries, uh, doing research uh, in certain articles and um, stuff that I ha I have from like my undergrad like decades ago <laughs> uh, that I am catching up on. Literally like reading lists that I put aside. And was like, I need to read this, and now I have the I have the time, so I want I'm gonna read it and really examine it and really read it and not read it for a class, um, and really deep deep uh, dive deep into it about you know what I am thinking about. Um, so that that helps uh, quarantine helps me in that way. And watching movies I haven't seen. <laughs> Um, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, we are gonna we're gonna transition to some advising sessions now. But um, thank you so much. We really appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much, guys, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, good to see you. I hope you have a good semester. Yeah. Bye. It would have been great if you could visit in person, but this works too. <laughs> well, yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon. See you soon.